to the most high. We are going to come into uh, attitude and behavior of conduct today, which is going to bring the praises forth. I have been uh, very encouraged to continue the teachings of the Torah. The lessons have been phenomenal to the soul, feeding the soul. I appreciate each and every one that has been supporting by sharing, by tagging others. We've increased by 25% over the last seven days. Torah is a lifeline, and we are to reverence the increasing law of return. When we're talking about saving souls, we're really talking about them returning. Amen? And we want to emphasize that we're welcoming you home. Those that are returning, we're welcoming you home where you have eternal life where you have the understanding that you're not the bottom you're above you from above you're not from beneath these are very important compassionate statements we're making because we do not want anyone to fear God in the way of thinking they're not able to come home amen <clears throat> so this evening we're going to take the time to provide scriptures, there will be a path for you to come home. Just relax, take a deep breath, and we're going to just do some studying. We're going to go in the Word and we're going to read scripture. These scriptures will speak very loud to who we are as a people and that we are definitely enough. We're enough. And so with the first scripture that we're going to go to is going to be Psalms 90. Let's all, if you have a Bible, it'd be pretty good to turn to these Psalms as we're speaking about them because there's a promise of protection. Hallelujah. A promise of protection. But we understand Dave's, David's seed to endure has to come with that promise of protection. Amen. We have to have the whole full deal of the matter. We can't uh, make it impartial, one part fitting somewhere just to conveniently bring the word. We have to let the word speak completely as it should. 
Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for today. We thank you for you bringing us into the time of the Gentiles. And in the time of the Gentiles, Father, you are showing us much kindness. You're showing us the way to go. You're under helping us understand that Genesis 1 and 1, uh, we thank you for it because it brings the consciousness uh, and the poetic understanding of the significance of what meditation and clearing your mind is. We beg thee with the strength of thy greatness of that right arm, untangle our knotted faith. Accept your people's song. Elevate and purify us, O oh awesome one. Please let us be one with you. Those who pursue your uniqueness, guard them as the pupil of an eye. Bless them, purify them, pity them. May your righteousness always reward them. Powerful and holy one, in goodness, lead your flock unique and proud one run to your destiny turn to your people run to your destiny run to him who remember your holiness accept our cries and hear our screams O knower of mysteries blessed is the name hallelujah of his noble kingdom forever and ever that is the psalm total of genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and it brings us everything that we need to approach the throne of grace amen so as we go to um psalms and by the way psalms means to fill in to fill in is a prayer shawl it's the song songs that david um, David wrote a prayer of Moses, the man of God, starting with that prophet. And these psalms are singing songs as well as praying psalms. Let's kind of follow the Bible along as how they flow together. In Psalms 90, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth over you have formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men. For the thousand years in your sight are they like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep that has been going on. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and it grows up. In the evening, it's cut down and it withers. So verse 7, For we have been consumed by your anger and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you. Our secret sins in the light of your countenance for all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teaching us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to your children and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. That's the complete of the fourth book of Tefillin. Tefillin is the name for Psalms. Amen. So as we're going forth, we're going to pause there. That's promises of protection. We're going to pause right there. But this is what today's lesson will really encourage you um, in terms of prayer, a timeless need. 
Hallelujah. A timeless need, as we learned for a review, for those that were not here, it was that the litany is endless. Help, heal me, help me, encourage me, enlighten me, enrich me, redeem me, glorify me, forgive me. But look what the Hebrew tefillin does for us. Insight into the Torah concept of prayer. The root of tefillah, to judge, to derivate. The function of prayer in these days that we need is to clarify and to decide. Hallelujah. In life, we constantly sort out speculations, facts from fancy. The exercise of this judgment is called, indeed, the word uh, used to go to the court of law. Amen. That's what we truly need to understand about Torah, going to the court of law. Exodus 21, 22. And the extension is related to the meaning, a clear separation between two things. A very clear separation between two things. Prayer is the soul's yearning to define what truly matters and to ignore the trivialities that often masquerade as essential. People always question the need for prayer. Does not God know our requirements without being reminded? Of course he does. He knows them better than we do. If prayer is intended only to inform God of our desires and deficiencies, it would be unnecessary. It would, treat, it would truly be the purpose to raise the level of the suppliant by helping them develop true perspectives. How many of us have true perspectives and we are trying to bring and entertain others in our understanding? So our perspective has to be in, has to dissipate so that the will of the Father can be completely able to give authority over the decisions and give us the right understanding. Amen. So when we're truly able to uh, have the perceptions of life so they can become worthy of his blessing, Com connection right there, people of God, that your right decisions become worthy of his blessings. This is the function of the evaluation, the decision-making process, and it's called prayer to some but it is called prayer to feeling to others. The prayer shawl, touching the hem of his garment, the virtue leaving from him. The Hebrew verb for praying, it is reflective word, meaning that the subject acts upon himself. Glory, hallelujah. The subject acts upon himself. Prayer is a process of self-evaluation, self-judgment, a process of removing oneself from the troubles, the, the torment times of life, to a little corner of truth, refastening the bonds that tie one to the purpose of life. Hallelujah. So as we review these wonderful sacred songs and sounds, let us be reminded prayer, a timeless need, and understand that entitles us to the sacred songs, song to mu musical accompaniments. The Hebrew title for uh, tefillin means praise, giving praise. If one would could be chosen to describe this particular area of protection, hallelujah, that praise, the authorship of how the Hebrew text before it begins the authors of praise and showing these authors uh, that there are 12 psalms assigned to the son of Korah. Though they were most likely performers rather than authors. Amen. Psalms 88. Let's stop. We're going to go through the Bible. Take our time because it's real essential that those that are guiding and leading people, they do not become hostile toward the word of God based on their understanding. Amen. 
This is one of the times and seasons that people in the name of the Most High are returning. But they are returning not so much because they have a guilty conscience. They are returning because they are finding that the good praises of the Lord, the good news, will bring a big um, envelopment of increasing, will increase them. That's why they're really returning, because they want to be increased in the returns of what they have seeded. What you put out is what you get back. Psalms 88, a song, a psalm of the sons of Korah to the chief musicians set to um, be a contempt, contempt, contemplation of what it is to have the presence, a prayer for the afflicted the ones that need healing, a prayer for those that are afflicted, God's covenant with David, healing power. Oh, Lord, God, my salvation, I have cried out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. Do you, do you notice do you notice that you you really putting some responsibility that that that's being taken that the healing is here and now I'm going to cry out day and night before you let your prayer come before you let my prayer come before you incline your ear to my cry and then when we look at the number 3 for my soul is full of troubles and my life draws near to the grave it didn't say I need your power. It said, my soul is in trouble, full of trouble, and my life draws near to your to the grave. I am counted with those who go down to the pit. Remember I told you a couple of weeks ago, we have to pay attention that we understand what the pit, the, the waterless pit really signifies in the word. So we are including scriptures as we are teaching so that you're going to always consciously be reminded that a, a need for salvation, a need for deliverance, this has to be a potent ingredient in how we, <clears throat> excuse me, how we perceive the word for the eternal effects in our life. Amen. This should humble us. It should give us um, the, the, the strength of the Holy Spirit to lean not to our own direction, but to his, because you cannot know the path without him leading you. You can't know which way to go without him being the one to endow you. So when you ask to be endowed, you got to take responsibility for the endowment. When you ask to be redeemed, do you know what the value of redemption is? So this is how the increasing returns will happen in the earth realm. I will like a man who has no strength. I am like a man who has no strength. Adrift among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, and who are cut off from your hand. Hallelujah. You have laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in depth, your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with all your waves. And verse 8 goes into God's covenant with David. A prayer for the afflicted is being prayed outward to those that will return. You have put away my acquaintances from me far away. That means the ones that need to be removed from your life cannot be in your life based on your afflicted ways of coming to him, that he hear your plea. You may, you have made me abomination to them. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to stop right there because that's why it's so important because the ones that were not your true good company, you, you became an abomination to them. They, they definitely want no part of you. So that's why when, when the enemy tries to deceive you and you look upon the ones God sent you as an abomination, you have made me an abomination to them. I am shut up and I cannot get out. My eyes waste away because of affliction. Lord, 
I have called daily upon you. I have stretched out my hands to you. Will you work wonders for the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise you? Shall your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Oh, your faithfulness in the place of destruction. Shall your wonders be known in the dark and your righteousness in the land of forgiveness? But to you I have cried out, O Lord. And in the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why do you cast off my soul? Why do you hide your face from me? Why do you hide your face from me? I have been afflicted and ready to die from my youth. I suffer your Torah. I am distorted. I am distorted. Your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They came around me all day long like water. They engulfed me all together. Loved one and friend you have put up far from me. Do you hear this? Can you can you can you sense what's going on in the scripture? How many want our loved ones far from us? But then it says, and my acquaintances into darkness. That's that helps us with the timeless need. It helps us with the function of the tefillin, the understanding of where true prayer can lead. We went to Psalms um, 90 to begin with, then we went back to 88. This is just to bring you and have you to see with your spiritual eyes and hear the, the, the tones of the song. It, it brings the understanding of why it's not just a casual, logical reasoning that things are happening because we can easily put blame on something that is not the blame that's good for us. And we have to be careful how we are really uh, looking at the essence of man. One time before the unfamiliar word root and branches, I bring to your attention because the root is life sustaining for the soul. Amen. The root is life-sustaining and even teaches us how to be a vessel of life-sustaining as our soul is fed. Amen? And then the soul is fed, fitting for intensely spiritual, observant people. Intensely. So when you, when you think somebody is over-hyper about something, and God is contending with them, we start to see someone who observance is casual or a non-believer, they don't even get why would that be a big deal so that we can differentiate who and what, when and where. Who, what, when and where in the functioning. It tells the, the truth about the person. Non-responsiveness to the things that would be praiseworthy in your deed, your deed toward the one God loves, God wants to cherish, God has in the apple of his eye, in his palm of his hand, and your indifference toward the very one he sent to bring victory, bring you the redemption, bring the endowment. Hallelujah. So when wind commands him to decease, why do we need to desist? Because the command has come. Wherever one puts his faith is a form of prayer. As we told you, the murderer may even pray to, to be able to kill. The thief may be able to pray to get in your, in your home and steal from you. So that's what breaks it down to let us know that the prayers are functioning. God's need. God's need shows also the holies of holies on Yom Kippur, God asked him for a blessing. He replied, may it be your will that your mercy conquer your anger, that your mercy overshadow your attributes, that your 
uh, that you behave toward your children with the attribute of mercy and that for their sake you go beyond the boundaries of judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank and praise you for giving us an opportunity to know the wiles of the devil's schemes that works against the things of the Most High. So now, as David precedes us in the Psalms, we're going to turn to 73. Psalms 73. Amen. Psalms 73. If we turn to Psalm 73, as we have been able to see how the functions of God's word with the tefillah and the prayer shawl, and then we end up in the fate of the wicked. We understand the fate of the wicked in Psalms 73. Amen. We're going to read Psalm 73, and that's um, going to be the identity to the function. Asap, Psalm of Asap. Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. But I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no fangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 8. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully, lawf, lawfully. They sit their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Verse 10, hallelujah. Therefore, his people return. That's our year. I, I, get, I get a quickening in my spirit because the increasing return. Souls return, but they have the value of of praiseworthy deeds returning. When you go before the king, you go bearing gifts, amen, bearing up, amen. And it says, therefore, his people return here, and the waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? Is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease, they increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. Verse 15. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of my children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream, when one awakes, so the Lord, when he awakes, when he awakes you and you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus, my heart was grieved and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me to glory verse 25 whom have i in heaven but you and there is none upon earth that i desire besides you my flesh and my heart failed but god is the strength of my heart 
and my portion forever. This is Psalm 73, the fate of the wicked. Remember your people, O Lord. In verse 27, for indeed those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near unto you, God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. Amen. Now, just because we're speaking about the fate of the wicked, let's go back up, back up. And we're going to talk a few minutes about Psalm 73 and go to Psalms um, 50. I want to show you how this interaction happens. So we're going to go to Psalms 50. I want one part of Psalms 50 to explain something about the wicked to you that you will see if you study the scriptures in the entirety before we pronounce, because in part, it's incomplete. But when we're studying the tefillin, the understanding of the mighty one, God, Lord, Almighty, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down. From the rising of the sun to the going down. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. God wants to hear from his people, his congregation. More than just a few voices, he wants to hear from the congregation. <clears throat> Excuse me. He shall have them not to keep silent. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temperous all around him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let the heavens declare him righteous, for God himself is judge. Hear all my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you, I am God, your God. I will not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt, burnt offerings, which are continually before me. I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats out of your fold. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountain and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. If I were hungry, I would, would not tell you, for the world is mine and all its fullness. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats, offering to God's thanksgiving, and pay you your vows to the Most High? Call upon him in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statute or take my covenant in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and you speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept silent. Your thoughts that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. This is Psalms 50. We always go to Psalms 51, but today God 
Almighty wants us in the hearing of our ear and the spirit, Psalms 50. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me, and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Amen, amen, amen. That was Psalms 50. As we go forth farther along, it becomes very obvious of the prayer's function and what the seriousness of the tefillin represents when we approach the throne of grace and as we have been um, bringing these teachings forth we're going to now go to uh, Psalms 83 let's go to Psalms 83 this is just using as a model as a model of what the Psalms bring to our delight. A psalm. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. Do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. Would that be you? Would that be me? We spoke of the immunity. We spoke of the stronghold of God. We would be the sheltered people. We would be the ones with the immunity. We would have the safe harbor where the peace, the shalom. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Whereas we have come to build and add and gather in a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Do you see that? As long as there was no real function and presence of the truth of prayer, they could camouflage and put a guilty spin on the things that God meant to edify. Keep the people oppressed with the word of God, for be it not. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Gebel, Ammon, and Aelik, Abelik, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, deal with them with a million, as with Sisera and Jabin at the brook of Kashan, who perished at Edar, who became as a refuge on the earth. Make their nobles like Obadiah and Zabed. Yes, all their princes like This is why people have to discern before they accept uh, a superficial uh, word that doesn't really mean what it means. This is what it, this is it. It says, "Let us, let us take for ourselves the pastures of God for a possession." O oh God, make them like a whirling dust. Let the chaff before the wind. As the fire burns the wood, as the flame sets the mountain of fire. So pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with your storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and dismayed forever. Let them be put to shame and perish that they may know that you whose name alone is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. 
That is Psalms 83. Hallelujah. Let's continue, and I will probably res resume um, this study tomorrow. We're going to look at Solomon, Psalms 72, and watch the flow of 72 as we have been reading in the um, kind of like the organizing of the Torah in the Psalms. Psalm 72, hallelujah. This is a Psalm of Solid, Solomon, and it is the tefillin, touching the hem of his garment. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and will break in pieces the oppressor. They will fear you as long as the sun and moon endure. Throughout all generations, he shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing the grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days, the righteous shall flourish and abundance of peace until the moon is no more. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him and his enemies will lick the dust. That's the second time. Remember yesterday we had lick the dust. The king of Tarsh of the Isos will bring presents. The king of Sheba and Saba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Verse 12, for he will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also, and him who have no helper. He will spare the poor and needy and will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight, and he, will, he shall live, and the goal of Sheba will be given to him. Prayer also will be made for his continually, and daily shall he be praised. There will be an abundance of grain in the earth. On the top of the mountains, its fruit will wave like Lebanon, and those of the city shall flourish and grass of the earth. Verse 17, the name shall endure forever. His name shall continue as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And the blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Verse 20 in closing, uh, Psalm 72. The prayer of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. Amen. Amen. So as we go back and we close out for this session, I pray that you would meditate day and night on the scriptures that have been presented here. And then you will see and understand uh, timeless need and that things that are wanted in prayer to function. Amen. To function in prayer. I'm going to go over again. The Genesis prayer is the 42 letter and their associate meditations that help guide the miracles to specifically the areas of our lives that's needing a miracle. The words themselves are simply vehicles to get 42 letters into our consciousness. So there will be like a song continually in your being is now nearly as significant as the meditation. So you have the song in your heart as you sing, as you pronounce the words with the song, and they will be able to be played 
in your in your rhythm of your existence in your being can you imagine a walking song that when you are even speaking the word the song has already been uh developed the following is the strict way that without any understanding of maybe some of the more conscious things we first say we beg thee with the strength and greatness of thy right arm untangle our knotted faith return increasing return accept your people's song elevate purify O oh, awesome one please heroic one those who pursue your uniqueness guide them as the pupil of an eye bless them purify them pity them may your righteousness always reward them powerful and holy one in goodness lead your flock unique and proud one turn to your people who remember your holiness accept our cries and hear our screams o knower of the mysteries Blessed is the name of his noble kingdom forever and ever. This is releasing a time right now, people, that the, we see the, that these psalms beseeching God to hear us and to answer us with miracles as if we're to recite this to all power and meditative properties encoded that are already in your DNA. Amen. Original form, in other words. So when we're thinking upon the things, we're thinking from the Hebraic mindset. In the, in the, in the importance of 42 letters derived, um, the letters of Genesis, that really is able to invoke the proper way of pronouncing your words. In other words, it's changing, it's changing the language, the spiritual language within you. They're, by themselves, they serve little high, higher purpose and even less when we say them, they're empty and they fall to the ground. But flight to the angels, and that's where we begin to see the angels flying back and forth from heaven on high, beautiful and appropriate considering the knowledge of the universe. But today, we know much more. We understand angels as being... Um, able to be operating at speeds of greater than the speed of light. And thus, from our point of view, that we see the energy flowing. You understand what I'm saying? The release. Have you ever just went towards somebody and they could feel the power of the release upon them as you're speaking? That's because you have that song, hallelujah, that we just talked about. But both their quadrant bundles capable of being imprinted upon us, carrying those messages instantly to the four corners of the universe. I even, as I'm raising my hand, I feel it. Because they operate faster than light, much faster, the, our perception of the transferring and respiration, restoration happens instantly. Amen? The principle of affinity. The principle of affinity. Hallelujah. Nothing we think d goes unnoticed by the cosmos. Nothing. Nothing we think happens in a vacuum. It's all the effect of the universe. For better or for worse, we constantly projecting these messages, broadcasting to the universe, to all who live in it, who we really are. Did you get that? I hope you caught that because who you really are is being revealed even if you're not acknowledging it. What we really think, what type of energy and people we want to attract into our lives. For it is the reason that we need to take advantage of every opportunity to create positive. The angels encamped all about around me. It is the reason that we need to tap into angel producing, increasing returns, source of the Genesis prayer, as we understand to generate broadcast positive into the universe. Remember, this is important. Do remember the principle 
of affinity. Getting what we give is called the principle of infinity. Did you get that? To get what you give. Because our actions and thoughts are broadcast to the far reaches of the universe, we're telling everyone in the universe what we think, what we feel, what we do, who we really are. This is why no matter the fuscade that we put on, people see right through it. The only ones we are really fooling are ourselves. It is also why people who think like us, who are in the same level of consciousness as us, suddenly appear in our lives unconsciously. We're attracting them. So if thoughts are good and pure, we'll attract more spiritual people to ourselves who help us get to even higher levels of spirituality. The flip side is also true as well. If our thoughts aren't so pure, neither will be those individuals who gain or gather around us. That's making it harder for us to break out of our spiritual torment. This isn't necessarily bad because by seeing our own thoughts and actions in others, we're given the opportunity to recognize and deal with that negativity face to face. Otherwise, we may never recognize it for what it is. We will continue to be forced to wrestle with it internally. The Genesis prayer acts as the advocate of the universe, standing by our side, helping to keep us from in incriminating ourselves as it continually argues out on our behalf, helping to cleanse and buffer the negative before we broadcast it is so much more powerful than we can imagine. I just wanted to share this with you today. I just wanted to share it with you. I wanted to share it because um, it's a separation we experience in our lives that blocks the miracles. We must want to be one soul with our fellow man, but saying it and doing it are quite different things since one of us are saints. I'm going to read that again. I'm going to say it again. Saying it and doing it are quite different things. And since no, none of us are saints, the universe gives us some leeway. If you have at least the intention in your hearts, our consciousness will follow, as will be explained in details. So when we're looking at we beg thee, and with the strength of greatness, thy right arm untangle our knotted faith. Fate. We see the help guide the miracles to specific areas of our lives. And when we are simply vehicles for our consciousness, it's a beautiful song. Meditation comes. Amen. I hope that this has been valuable to those that are increasingly returning. And that's exactly what God, God's need for his people is to return to the attributes of mercy and that for their sake, you go beyond the boundaries of judgment. Hallelujah. And so this time that we're spending together, abounding both for what it says and for what it does not. Why did God give Ishmael's blessing out to him? Why didn't Ishmael comply by blessing God? How does a request that God treat Israel kindly constitute a blessing of God? What do we give God when we bless him? Derives the word blessing, spring, a spring flows constantly and its waters increase. There we go. You see how he bring it? Return, increase, increase, and return. This is a law. It'll be a law. A law is a law, and it works. Amen. <clears throat> so when we bless God, we are proclaiming our hope 
for an increase. But of what? God himself is infinite. Without beginning or end, we cannot and dare not suggest that he could grow beyond what he is. While it is true that man cannot grasp God's essence even to be a minute degree, we nevertheless can perceive him as he relates to us. The prosperous society sees him as the benefactor, beneficent God. The afflicted individual smarts at his judgment. The Torah scholar thrills to his wisdom. Or man can be so nasty and brutish as to think that power comes only from the barrel of a gun and prosperity from the blades of a harvester. God's degree, revelation in the universe, is a proportion of Israel's spiritual capacity to receive it. When Israel was at its zenith, God revealed himself on Mount Sinai in an unprecedented splendor. When Israel sank into the exile and the spiritual confusion, he was so concealed that it he was so concealed that Israel wondered whether it was still him or his nation. As we look at these words, God desires man's perception of him to deepen and the degree of his revelation to increase. Since this is his wish, this is where he's pleased, blessed, when man makes it possible for this to happen. According to whenever a Jew prays to or blesses God, he plays a part in carrying out his wish to di display his presence in the world's affairs. In a sense, God, the ultimate blessing, the outcome of a successful prayer is to permit God to come closer to Israel, to restrain his anger and show his mercy, to respond to Israel's attempt to serve and sanctify him by allowing his love to squash his attribute of judgment. Ishmael wished for the desired result of the prayers. The increase of God's presence. He was the perfect blessing. Amen. This is so powerful.